So what's going to happen next? Joining me now from Rome is the former Italian Europe Minister Sandro Gozzi. Thank you very much indeed uh, for being yeah. with us. Uh, is that it then? Uh, no room for negotiation between the new Prime Minister and the European Union? Do you think that's true? I think I would wait uh, to see uh, what uh, Boris Johnson come up with. Uh, as Donald Tusk said, we are ready to negotiate, uh, to discuss in detail the proposal of Boris Johnson, which are not clear yet. So I would wait. I would say that the ball in uh, Boris Johnson court and he should come up with the specific proposals. And then uh, then uh, the discussion would open. I mean, he said rather surprisingly to Parliament yesterday, uh, he's ready to meet any time uh, when the European Union comes up with ideas. Well, the European Union has put on the table uh, very detailed ideas, uh, all uh, well presented in the withdrawal agreement. Now there is a new prime minister. The new prime minister uh, doesn't agree, has never supported the withdrawal agreement as such. And uh, now we are waiting for, for new proposal from inside. inside and I, I get this proposal will come, uh, will come soon if I have to look at the timetable that Boris Johnson has set as a new prime minister. He believes, and certainly his supporters believe, that he is in a stronger position than Theresa May, partly because he's just gone through the process of being elected Prime Minister, but also because he is prepared to leave without an agreement. Do you think that does give uh, the UK a stronger negotiating hand? I think, uh, honestly, it is a plus. Because uh, finally we got clarity from the UK side. And I think that we should uh, negotiate. Uh, we, our common interest over the channel is to have a Brexit with deal. But to me, my, my personal opinion that Boris Johnson is very clear, Brexit will happen, will happen by the end of October. So we have also to prepare to the remote case, but still possible, of a hard Brexit. Uh, but it, I think that this clarity is good both for Britain and for the EU. And I also think that he was right in not appointing uh, the new British commissioner, because uh, it gives him uh, more credibility when he says that he really wants to leave. And of course, I regret Brexit, but uh, I, uh, I regret even more in this period this uh, uncertainty that uh, is very harmful for business, it's very harmful for investment, it's very harmful for both. So we are, uh, of course, ready to do everything is possible uh, to ensure a Brexit with deal. But to have clarity about the date, it is, in my view, a step forward. There are those on the Conservative side who are saying, look, let's just accept that we're not going to reach an agreement on the withdrawal uh, document. Therefore, we should just move now uh, to discussing a free trade agreement, which they say uh, was one of the things that the European Union offered them. What do, what do you say to that idea? I would say that it is uh, clear that we have to concentrate also our effort uh, on the future relationship. Uh, we are ready to, uh, the EU is ready to uh, reopen the discussion about the political declaration. In the political declaration, we can shape our future. It's, our future must remain a very close future. We must uh, reshape our partnership. And I think that in that document, uh, it is uh, certainly possible uh, to, uh, to open new, uh, new options. Uh, and I think the sooner we do that, the better. Well, that's the future relationship, but Mr Johnson appears to want to divide up what's in the withdrawal agreement, maybe reach some uh, agreement on uh, the future in Ireland, and at the same time, uh, he's moving towards making an offer uh, concerning citizens' rights and would like reciprocation uh, from the European Union and the Member States. Uh, is that a good idea? Because, you know, they, we're talking about real people's lives here. No, for, uh, I mean, to be clear on EU citizens' life and to be clear uh, by reciprocity on British citizens' life in the, in, the, in the continent and in Ireland is absolutely essential. And uh, uh, I am personally relieved that uh, at least on that, Johnson, uh, it is very clear that he will confirm uh, everything we have, uh, we have negotiated so far. Uh, we cannot play with people's lives. And we cannot punish people who have decided to invest their life, their future in Britain or in the EU. So that must be certainly a very fixed point. On the rest, we have to see what, I repeat, we have to see what Boris Johnson will come up with. 
Uh, certainly, we have been discussing at length about the Irish border. He said that he's got uh, uh, new ideas and new uh, solutions, uh, very advanced technologically. Well, let's see. Uh, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I repeat, we have to prepare to all the scenario, and we are preparing ourselves to all the scenario, including the remote scenario of heartbreak. And uh, just finally, both in this country and uh, across Europe, we see descriptions of Boris Johnson as a clown, as a charlatan, uh, as a British Trump, uh, a populist. How, how do you see him from what you've seen of him so far? Unpredictable. Uh, so far, uh, Boris Johnson has been uh, the most un one of the most unpredictable politicians uh, in Britain and the EU. I think that this is why we, there are so many uh, question marks about what he really uh, wants to do. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, the first, uh, he, doesn't, uh, he doesn't need any advice from my, from my side, but I think that uh, he needs to prove that uh, he will deliver in what we, he has been saying uh, so insistently in the, in the last uh, months, weeks and the days, because until now he, he has been known around for someone who changes his mind very quickly. I don't think he's going to change his mind, but certainly there is a credibility test, if you want, uh, for him in this very first phase of, of, of his new premiership. Sandra Gossi, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you.